morning, everybody. This is Java with John program. Uh, it's June 5th, 2020. I'm John Mangiarotti, your town manager, and I have a great uh, series of guests uh, with us this morning that will be talking about a wide variety of subjects uh, about what's happening on in town. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, the Java with John program uh, was a senior center monthly event that we held at the Acton Senior Center. And it was a great opportunity for me and some guests to engage with our seniors and, and provide information and then get some great questions and answers. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to do that in person since February, but we have been doing this every week online. So we hope that uh, you're listening. And if you have questions that you please send them to us and we'll try to answer them on air today. Uh, you can send them to manager at actonma.gov or you could call in and we'll try to get you live on the air if it works out, 978-929-6611. Uh, so uh, why don't I get started because we have a, a full docket today. Um, I think I'd, I'd like to first start off by just mentioning what's been going on nationally and uh, we've seen it locally and it's been uh, a great concern of mine and, and of our teams. And, and, and uh, earlier this week, uh, I, I issued a statement with Burroughs, who will be joining the program later uh, today, and with our counterparts in Boxborough, just to try to give a sense of uh, that we take this very seriously and that um, we want to let the community know uh, what we're thinking. So I, I just want to take a second to read that statement that we issued earlier this week. So I'll do that now. Uh, it said, um, we, the municipal and law enforcement leaders of Acton and Boxborough, denounce the senseless killing of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police officers. The tragic death of George Floyd creates justifiable fear and anger within communities throughout the country. We are angry as well as the actions and inactions last week by Minneapolis police officers were horrible and certainly not how the police officers are trained to handle any situation. Police officers are trained to safeguard human life first above all else. We acknowledge that unfair treatment of people based on their race is a problem still present in our society and in our communities and in the criminal justice system. And this is unacceptable. And we cannot be silent on this issue. We are working hard to be agents for good and positive change. We look forward to continuing to engage with our residents and with community leaders to continue conversations about this important issue. We join with all of those who have demonstrated peacefully throughout our country and in our community in calling for justice for Mr. Floyd and his family. And we plan to continue taking steps in our communities that will create lasting change. The members of our police departments in our communities commit, are committed to professional conduct, democratic and legitimate policing and procedural justice for all people. And um, you know, it's something that we were very concerned about and our chief, Chief Richard Burroughs is gonna be on the program and we'll be speaking with you all in a few minutes and uh, we look forward to that conversation. So switching gears back to what we've been talking about every week for the last three months is how we're responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, fortunately, there are some things that are starting to change. Some things are opening up a little bit. Uh, Heather will provide some updates on where we are in terms of cases and testing, but we have been um, seeing things open. Restaurants will be opening for outside dining uh, and takeout, uh, full service takeout starting Monday, June 8th. Uh, sports fields, I believe the Board of Health uh, made a decision to start opening those up soon. The tennis courts on Elm Street and the school's tennis courts opened this week by appointment only. The beach at Nara Park will be opening again uh, in a few weeks. So a lot of things are starting to come back to service, uh, but we're also being very careful with how we do things and following the several state standards and guidelines. We've actually uh, conducted an entire retraining of all of our staff, which our human resources director, Marianne Fleckner, will talk a little bit about shortly. And uh, we're also taking several other precautions. For those of you that voted uh, earlier this week at the, uh, on the election, the town election and the special state election, you saw there that we took several precautions, um, face coverings, plexiglass, a lot of, there were people cleaning every, every minute, uh, every surface was being cleaned constantly. 
and that's the kind of thing that we're going to be doing going forward especially as we start to plan for our annual town meeting which is scheduled for june 29th we'll be talking more about that monday night with the board of selectmen and we'll be publishing about uh, when and how and that meeting will be conducted so please stay tuned for more information about that so as i mentioned we have a great lineup of guests and um, i'd like to get started with our first one today uh, Heather York is the director of the Acting Nursing Service, and she's been the point person for all the public health and all the work that we've been doing with contact tracing and uh, managing very complicated and complex matters uh, related to this COVID-19 pandemic. Heather, what's, uh, what's happening today? Good morning, John. Good morning, everyone. Um, so just a few little updates based on the COVID-19. Um, so currently in Acton, we have 170 overall cases. Um, 32 of those are currently in isolation. 117 have recovered. And unfortunately, um, we've had 21 fatalities. Um, the, the better news is that our numbers seem to be holding a little bit more steady. Um, we're not getting positive cases on a daily basis where we were getting um, sometimes, you know, three to four every day over the peak. Um, so that's really good news for Acton. But I want to just stress that, you know, we still need to be following our social distancing guidelines by the governor, as well as wearing a face covering, uh, because there's still that incidence that, you know, the, the virus is so new um, that we don't know if it will go through the summer months. Um, typically, viruses like this, um, you know, hang around a little bit longer. It's not just like the flu, where the flu has a season. Um, this can last um, through warmer months. Um, so that's where we are with the COVID. Um, we, as a nursing service, are um, still doing the contact tracing. We're also still doing our home visits. Um, we're looking forward to when the building um, gets open again and when we're, we're cleared as a nursing department by the governor to start doing um, routine medical procedures. So that includes our podiatry clinic. Um, we're, we're hoping to get that open within the summer months um, so folks can start coming into the building to see Sarah Kinghorn, um, which will be really great because we miss everyone. Um, on that note, because we do, um, Linda Cullen, our public health nurse, typically does a uh, wellness discussion every month. So I just wanted to mention a couple of things um, just quickly not related to COVID about um, about safety in the hot weather because we've jumped into summer. Um, I just wanted to mention, you know, seniors especially have a really hard time um, with the sudden changes in temperature. A lot of the time that is because of a chronic medical condition that they have and their body doesn't respond to the changes in heat very well. Um, it can also be because of medications that you're on and it, and it affects your body's ability to control the temperature or to control if you're um, sweating to cool yourself down. Um, so stay cool and stay hydrated. Um, stay in air conditioning if you can. That's the most important thing. Don't always rely on your fan um, to keep you cool when it's hot outside because that's sort of a false sense as it's blowing. It's a false sense that your body temperature is low. So just be safe with that. Uh, you want to make sure that you're drinking more fluids, especially water, um, and don't wait until you're thirsty. But if you're someone who takes medication to get rid of excess water, check with your doctor on what, um, what amount of water you can drink during the hot weather. Try not to use your stove or oven to cook because it does make the house hotter. If you have an outside grill or you can do cold weather, you know, hot weather foods like cooler foods, it's a good idea. Loose, lightweight clothes, light colorings, 
cool baths and showers to cool down. Um, you know, doing activities out in the garden or in the yard can make you um, sweat profusely where you need more water. So if you're doing that, make sure you're getting the water and taking rest in between the activities. Um, you know, if you have a friend who you're concerned about, who doesn't have a lot of family and you're concerned about the heat, check on them, give them a call. You know, give us a call if you have concerns. The COA also obviously is, is there for you to reach out to if you have concerns about anybody uh, in the community or yourself. Um, and just, you know, watch the news, watch the weather, and seek uh, medical assistance if, if you have any of heat-related illnesses like muscle cramping, headaches, nausea, or vomiting. So I just wanted to throw that out there since we've gone from sort of spring <laughs> to full summer in the last few days. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, I'm, I'm not complaining about that. It's nice to see the warm water, but thank you for the tips. Uh, we all appreciate it and great job as, as always. So our next guest will be Sharon Mercurio. Sharon is the director of the, of the Senior Center, as you all know. Sharon, I noticed uh, you have a plant there. Is that a mother, mother-in-law's tongue? I, I have no idea. I usually kill them, so. <laughs> That's a mother-in-law's tongue, and I actually gave one of those to my mother-in-law, and it's, it's actually doing very well. Um, so I, I love those plants. But uh, what, what's going on uh, with you and the seniors? I know, uh, I know you announced last week that it doesn't look like we'll be opening the senior center anytime soon. Yep. So have you heard any feedback on that? And, and what are you doing to make sure that people are still engaged with this? Sure, senior? absolutely. Um, our seniors are amazingly resilient. We um, continue to touch base. Um, I think a lot of them are stepping out of their comfort zone and, and using technology that they hadn't done before. Um, they understand, you know, the governor's orders are very clear that it's safer at home, at least for the first two phases for anybody 65 and older. So, um, they have good heads on their shoulders. You know, they're they're doing what's smart and what's safe for them. Um, some are really that still quarantining um, pretty rigidly, and other ones are starting to um, socialize. We had a group of seniors that um, had a little lunch gathering in someone's backyard where they kept social distance. So um, they're doing amazing. We're slowly ramping up. The COA has continued to be open, even though the senior center building has been closed. Um, this week, we have a lot of different programs on Zoom. <clears throat> Monday, our friends group are, are meeting. This is their first meeting on Zoom, so that's a little exciting. That's Monday at one. We continue to have tips with Terry Zavarowski, one of our exercise instructors, Tuesdays at 10. Um, the COA board will be meeting. This will be their second meeting. It's a public meeting, and that will be Tuesday at 10. Wednesday, we have computer club from 1.30 to 3.30. Uh, Thursday, we have a classical music presentation at one o'clock. Um, for any of these, you can email the Senior Center. We'll send you the link. Um, Acton TV has been fabulous. Um, the classical music program will also be shown later on Acton TV for folks that still aren't, aren't comfortable using technology. Um, a couple of reminders I had for seniors. One, um, the census, I think, that's kind of gone by the wayside. We have been in crisis mode for so long um, that that probably got put on your, your table and stuck in junk mail, but really important to fill out your census form. Um, I was at a meeting with the state yesterday and very eye-opening for me, we get some funding through um, the state formula grant. And we were told, you know, please encourage folks to do the, the census because our funding will be reliant on that till actually FY32, which was just scary to hear. Um, so please remember to fill out that form. I know that the town relies on um, funds from that as well. Um, and then Rich Burrows and I, the, the police chief, have been getting some calls from seniors concerned about receiving, I'm gonna show it, uh, these cards in the mail. Um, so initially there were some stimulus checks being sent from the government they've now switched to debit cards. Um, we've got our seniors so well trained that anything that looks out of the ordinary kind of raises that red flag. So we've been getting a lot of calls about these cards. They are legitimate. There is a number for you to call. Um, either reach out to the police or the COA. We have it on our Facebook page and uh, our website. 
the correct number to call uh, because they are legitimate. This is how some people are receiving their stimulus um, reimbursement. So, um, and that's it for me. Great, thank you for the updates. Uh, nice job as usual. Uh, are you introducing any new poetry related programming at the Senior Center given your new uh, expertise in that subject? Well, we'll see about that. Yeah, I think you've, you've given me a new um, job description, so. We'll, we'll make sure we don't miss the poem this week. I apologize for last week. Uh, it, was busy, it was a busy day, but we'll, we'll make sure we get you at the end. So hope we have something good for us. Um, thanks again. So our next guest is Marianne Fleckner. Marianne is the director of our human resources and she does a great job with helping us with all, everything from all of that. She's also very active in the community, currently serving as the president of the Acton Boxborough Rotary Club. So Marianne, can you tell us a little bit about the training that we have to do now based on the new state regulations and some of the other exciting things that you've been working on? Sure, absolutely. Um, so good morning, everyone. And I am going to have to ask John later on a little bit more about the mother-in-law's plant. And so I did not know that, John. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking to myself as a mother-in-law, um, that plant has really long, sharp, um, I don't know how to describe it. So I'll have to find out a little bit more from John about that plant. It's also um, known as a, as a St. George's sword or a snake plant, so. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> more information, I, will, I definitely want to learn more about. Um, so the training that John was talking about, we're just really happy that this week we have been able to provide uh, four online trainings. Uh, myself, Heather York, Cheryl Ball, our health director, and my colleagues in human resources, uh, we've trained over 100 of our employees live, and also we've recorded it and we'll be providing it electronically. And a big part of the training is, is the personal um, hygiene, the precautions that we need to take as employees to make sure that we are practicing safety standards uh, when it comes to social distancing, using our face coverings correctly, and also as the visitors to the office buildings, our municipal office, of office buildings, when we open again, to make sure that we are conveying information to our visitors as well. And what I just want to quickly do is share with all of you the welcome poster that the Commonwealth created that we are being asked to post in all our municipal office buildings. We included this in our training to our employees so that our, our employees see that we as employees are taking our job very seriously and that we are making sure that we're complying, complying with the state mandatory safety standards and that we've checked off these four boxes that we are wearing our face coverings, that we're practicing social distancing that we are providing hand washing capabilities. We're washing our hands every 20 seconds, or we are making sure that we use hand sanitizer, that we have received training. And this is the training that I'm actually speaking about right now that we've provided to our employees this week, and that we have thorough cleaning protocols in place. And so this poster, again, will be conspicuously posted in all our municipal office buildings when we do reopen up to the public. It will be translated into Spanish, simplified Chinese, Russian, and also Portuguese. It is signed by our town manager, John Mangiarati, and he's asking the visitors as well to do their part by wearing their face mask, their face covering, and maintaining the six foot social distancing. And so that's really such a key part is to wear a face covering, to wear a face mask. And on that note is tomorrow, um, putting my uh, Rotary President of Acton Boxborough Club hat on is that Along with Ron Siskel, who heads up Burke, and Ryan Ferrara, and um, the town of Acton, I'm sorry, Ron, Ron, um, Ryan Ferrara is the town administrator of Boxborough, for those who may not know that. And um, our town and a bunch of organizations, we are promoting the uh, volunteer efforts to 
distribute actually I think it's thousands that they have available of face coverings, face masks for residents who may not have as easy access to a face mask. And it is tomorrow, which is June 6th. It's at the Boxborough Regency from nine to 12. And also the distribution is next Saturday, June 13th, also from nine to 12 at the Boxborough Regency. Uh, Ron Siskel, he is looking for volunteers, I believe still, um, but more so if you or a friend or a family member, you know of someone who now you can get out of your home a little bit easier and you need to go to the grocery store or do those errands, but you don't have access to a face covering, a face mask, this is what this is for, for the residents to be able to go and get a face mask. And we're really excited about this because we know that this is such a huge part, as Heather was saying, and time and time again, a big part of the protocol for not only you to remain healthy, but also the people who are near you when you cannot practice that six foot social distancing. So Ron's email, and I can put it in the chat box as well, is R for Ron, Siskel, S as in Sam, I as in Igloo, S as in Sam, C as in cat, O as in open, <laughs> um, L as in lamb at gmail.com. So it's Ron Siskel at gmail.com. And I'll put that in the chat box. And a little shout out to my fellow Rotarian, uh, Mark Ducey, who uh, heads up Acton TV. Um, and I believe that's it. Thanks, John. Great job. And uh, Marianne's taking Job with John to new levels with screen sharing. This is the first time we've done that. So thank you and nice work. And thanks for keep bringing us forward uh, every week. We appreciate that. Uh, so uh, thanks for those updates. And uh, we will uh, continue on the program now. Our next guest, uh, this is a second time on the program uh, for Chief Burroughs. Uh, Chief Richard Burroughs uh, from the Acton Police Department is joining us here. And uh, Chief, it's been a busy uh, few weeks at the police department. Can you tell us a little bit about what's been going on this week and, and uh, some other updates? I certainly can. And uh, thank you for reading that statement at the beginning of the program. Um, I am very proud to lead a uh, progressive police department uh, comprised of very dedicated men and women who provide a very high level of professional service uh, to the town of Acton. Uh, we are very grateful for the community support uh, that's come out over the past couple of weeks emails, phone calls, um, and I've said this before, every year we get so many more attaboys, girls, thank yous uh, for our offices and the, and the hard work they do than we do complaints. Um, one of the things we do is being progressive, we just recently achieved uh, certification uh, through the Accreditation Commission and we plan on getting accredited later this fall, which makes sure, it's, it's in, making sure that we're, we're performing um, what we have industry best practices for policing, uh, which, which is, you know, helps our offices and uh, provide that professional level of service. So those are some of the things we do, we have been doing on a regular basis, uh, which helps us out. Um, there's a lot going on uh, the past couple of days. We've had uh, some very large protests in, um, in the center of town in Kelly's Corner. Uh, Black Lives Matters has uh, organized the event. We've seen several hundred people. Uh, we haven't done an actual count, but some people estimate between three and 400 people have been out there. They've been getting um, quite a bit of support from the uh, passerbys, the traffic beeping and honking, uh, people hanging out signs out the window, which is, which is great to see. And then uh, the last couple of nights uh, near the end of the event, they've walked up Main Street uh, to the public safety facility where they, they've taken a knee in support of, uh, of their cause. Uh, our officers have been out there supporting them. We've been stopping traffic off of uh, the Route 2 off ramps uh, to help them get by without getting anybody run over. So we've been doing a good job working with them. It's been very peaceful. It's great to see um, families out there, young men and women out there uh, with their signs, um, you know, trying to get their message out there. Uh, tonight is going to be a double header. Tonight we're going to have uh, another planned protest in Kelly's Corner. They usually start around 430. And we also have the uh, high school seniors graduating tonight. Congratulations to all of them. They're going to be staging out at the Boxborough Regency. They're doing a rolling rally from the Boxborough Regency uh, through the high school, high school grounds uh, for their graduation. 
So my suggestion is stay away from West Acton and Mass Ave tonight. Unless you're in support of them, please line up along Mass Ave and, uh, and cheer on your seniors. But if you need to get somewhere quickly, you might want to avoid that area of town uh, at all costs. And uh, as always, uh, we're here if you need us. And it's a little tricky right now. We miss our breakfasts in the morning. We miss our lunches. We miss our coffee with a cop. We miss our Citizens Police Academy. Uh, very much looking forward to uh, connecting with our, our community and our seniors um, as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thanks for the updates. What I, I guess uh, we're now into the portion of the program where we get questions from the public. Um, and I actually have I have a question to start off with, and uh, for you though, what what type of um, what type of interaction has there been with the groups that are uh, lining up on Kelly's Quarter and in front of the PSF with officers? Has there been dialogue, or has it been uh, what have they been? How have they been interacting? Um, so the organizers, uh, we we try to contact the organizers. They gave us a heads up it was going to happen, and then we've been working with them. Uh, on trying to facilitate whatever it is they need to do. Um, we've been trying to keep them safe. We had masks last night to offer anybody that didn't have a mask. Uh, they've been trying to socially distance as much as they can, which is great to see, but not, uh, it's not a perfect event uh, by any means. Um, but we've been interacting with them and uh, it's, from what I've heard, it's all been positive interactions. It's really, um, it's nice to see local action by, by people in our community. And it's nice to see it happening in communities all over the Commonwealth and the country. I think it's nice to see that people are um, really focused on this and, and trying to make a difference. So hope, hopefully we continue a, a productive and peaceful conversation um, on this uh, regarding this matter. Uh, thank, thank you for the updates. Uh, the questions are rolling in here. Uh, hold on, let me, let me bring up the docket. Um, oh wait, I have some breaking news about the library. So uh, people have missed the library. The library is a cultural institution. It's a community center for the town and it's been closed since March 13th, I believe. So it's been a big, uh, it's been tough for people that not have their books and their digital media and their everything else that they get there. So we're not gonna be able to open the library, but we are announcing that starting June 10th, we will be providing a curbside pickup service, which will allow for limited uh, access to materials based on a certain amount that will allow you to check out and make it available through curbside. There's a whole set of instructions for how to do this, which will be published uh, later today if it hasn't already been on the Acton Memorial Library webpage and on social media. And we'll also push it out later tonight in our update. So please check that out and start thinking about what books you want to read. Uh, if, you, if you've been waiting, I hope you may already have a list. And uh, so check that out. Other things that are opening, uh, I had mentioned that the Nara Beach is gonna open. The date for that is actually June 13th. We're working very hard to get that all in order and be able to open safely on June 13th. So call the rec department if you want to uh, sign up for a beach pass or uh, if you have any questions about that. There are other, uh, and I guess another question, another thing about the library is that if you had if you did go to the library in the past and you were about to bring your books back when this all happened and they said, sorry, we're not taking books. We, the drop box is now open outside of town, outside of the library, so you can bring your stuff and drop it off there. Um, if if uh, you've been waiting to do that now, it's okay to do so. So thank you for your patience. And we hope to have our library, uh, both of our libraries fully functioning uh, soon, uh, but we're just not there yet. But curbside is, is a good alternative for now. Here's a question uh, that we received about town meeting. So a few weeks ago, we announced that the date would be June 29th. We announced that we're going to be holding in a gymnasium at the high school, the upper gym. Uh, and the reason that for that is that we thought we thought the gymnasium would be much easier to rearrange than the auditorium because those are all fixed fixed seats. So we can in the gymnasium, we can move seats the way we want them to make it so people are safely distanced and we can make the stage uh, much bigger than the stage size is at the in the auditorium, but we've gotten a lot of questions about why we're not doing it outside. Uh, holding an outdoor town meeting has a lot of logistical challenges, which we're, we weren't uh, comfortable moving forward with. However, we are looking at and hoping to have a plan finalized, uh, if it's feasible to do so, to hold an overflow room. For, typically at a town meeting, there's an overflow room uh, for either if the, the main room gets too full or if people just want to go in a different place. We're looking to do that here and we're looking to do it outside. Um, 
there are some challenges that we're going to have to try to figure out how to overcome, but I think it's something that we're going to try to figure out and hopefully we'll have some news on that Monday. So stay tuned uh, next week for that. Um, just normal town meeting stuff. Uh, the warrant will be published the end of next week and will be sent to all households the week of the 15th. So look in your mailboxes for that. And if you come to town meeting, please bring that with you. Uh, we're going to try not to have too many things that we're handing out. Um, although I did get a request for annual town reports. So we may have a few boxes of those available if, if you'd like to, to grab one of those that day. Uh, here's a question from a concerned resident. Will there be any special event for the Independence Day this year? Um, of course, our terrific fireworks and uh, for Independence Day celebration at NARA has been canceled. And this question is, is there any alternative celebration being planned? I can tell you that at this point, well, there certainly isn't any plan to do anything at NARA. Uh, we did talk to uh, Acting TV and Rec about trying to bring together some footage from previous celebrations and try to put together something to show that day just so people can get a um, get a sense of the, a celebration uh, and hopefully that'll be something we can work on and uh, we'll announce that later uh, this month. Thank you for the question. Uh, here's a question for Heather. Heather, uh, what's what's the status of our nursing homes there was a lot of concern in the last few weeks um has the situation gotten any better that's a good question um so the life care center of acton um, did have quite a few initial positive cases um, when we did have the peak in town that was about Almost four weeks ago, I think, um, they initially started testing all the residents and staff um, the day that the governor announced um, that the, it would be mandatory to do that. I believe off the top of my head, they had 63 positive residents. Um, the good news is they haven't had a positive resident or employee um, in over, I think, 19 days as of today, which is great news. Um, you know, they've had a number of folks that were in isolation and has and have been moved off to the recovery unit. I believe that number as of yesterday was 22. Um, so that's wonderful news. They, they did a really nice job, you know, watching um, what was going on in other facilities um, as folks were because they sort of held off a little bit longer than other facilities having positive cases. So they really held off past that two week isolation guidance um, that the Department of Public Health had and went a little bit longer with um, their positive cases. They went out about three weeks before they started really moving them off that um, off the isolation unit to the recovered unit, just because some of the what was being shown is other um, locations were moving people off in that 14 days to 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 really give bed space, um, and as they were doing it, other residents were getting infected. So I think they did a great job with holding off. So this 19 day is really good news, and let's hope that it continues to stay at that level. Thank you. Uh, Heather, any sense of when people may be able to start visiting loved ones that they may have in nursing homes? I, I know that's a difficult question, but it's something that we haven't <laughs> visited for months. Right? Sure. So the state actually, um, the governor spoke two days ago, I believe it was. Um, it wasn't yesterday that they are getting that guidance together um, in stage two. Um, I'm, for the opening that um, residents will start to be able to have visitors, but it, there's guidelines. Um, the visitors have to be, sorry, the visits have to be outside. Um, one of the employees, I'm just gonna try to flip through my notes here that I took the other day from the governor. Um, there's an employee that has to be with the resident. Um, the family members, I believe can only be two you have to socially distance, um, of course, at six feet, also wearing masks, and it has to be pre-set um, up. So you have to call and make a time for that to happen because I'm assuming 
based on where their locations are, there's only so much outdoor space that they can use um, for small visits um, happening. Um, visitors will also be screened um, as they come to the facility before that visit happens, you know, which is, uh, which is a best practice um, and safety for everyone. Um, and I think, I think those were the highlights um, of when, of, of when, what will happen when that happens. So sometime, hopefully within phase two, um, our seniors within the life care center will, will get to see their relatives again. That's so important. That's great to hear. Um, uh, hopefully that, hopefully that'll be within the next week or so. Uh, hopefully we'll hear some good news on that from the governor uh, soon. Uh, here's another question about transportation. Uh, this came in through our YouTube uh, channel, so thanks for the question. Will the CAT uh, shuttle and the van service be running again soon? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, we had to make some changes to transportation based on the COVID pandemic. Uh, the, the Council on Aging van, the Roadrunner, and the Minute van are all and have been operating for essential trips. So if you have a transportation need, uh, you can call the transportation phone number or you can call our Acton Town Services hotline 978-929-6619 and you can schedule uh, essential trips through that, uh, through that venue. With regard to the rest of the programming, we're, we're waiting for guidance from the state. We initially thought it was going to be in phase three, uh, which could be for, not for several weeks. So we're going to continue to monitor that closely, but if you have essential trips that you need to take, you could call and get Roadrunner, Minute Van, or the COVA, COA Van service. So thank you for that question. I don't see any other questions unless there's one from one of our guests to another one of our guests, which would be, which might be fun. Uh, any takers on that? Okay. Uh, Marianne, of course. I know I can count on you. <laughs> Well, this isn't actually a question. I was just thinking about this and um, my coworker in the office, she just texted me because she's watching this and she had said, how about the position that we have recently posted? Um, postings right now, positions are hard to come by. Um, a lot of freezes, uh, understandably so when it comes to hiring but a uh, position, a temporary position that's funded by the CARES Act um, is on our website for a virtual meeting organizer. So we just wanted to quickly mention that um, it's part-time hours, um, it's, it is temporary, it is funded by the CARES Act, but we are looking for a virtual meeting organizer. A Zoom master, we need a Zoom master, right? A Zoom master, absolutely. Um, oh. You have to hit the ground running um, and help us with, Actually, this is a great example of these uh, Zoom meetings, webinars that we produce and show. Yeah, our, our IT team and, and several other staff who have stepped up are helping to support 10 to 15 Zoom meetings of, of uh, you know, public meetings uh, and also dozens and if not hundreds of regular Zoom meetings for staff matters. So it's definitely been a tool that we've used, uh, we've gone all in on and as we start to do other things and prepare for reopening and uh, we're going to need our IT team to focus more on those things. And so we hope to have some help temporarily uh, with virtual meetings because the work of the government is a lot of it's by the great people that I have here on the program, but we also have a lot of great work that happens through our volunteer committees. And in order to keep them functioning, we need to have a zoom master. That's not going to be the title, but a zoom person or whatever the title is, we need that to make sure that we uh, keep them going. So thank you for uh, that plug. Hopefully maybe we get some candidates out there. Uh, so thank and thank you all for uh, being part of the program today. I do wanna make sure that we end with a poem from our poet laureate of the Job with John program, Sharon Mercurio. Uh, before we do that, cause we're gonna say goodbye quickly. I just wanna thank Chief Burroughs, Director York, Director Fleckner, and Sharon, of course, and I want to thank the folks behind the scenes, Mark Ducey, uh, Austin Saganowis, and Justin from IT. So thank you guys, and um, take, us, take us away, Sharon. <laughs> All right, so this um, poem is inspired by Rosa Parks, written by L. Smith. 
and it's entitled Any Seat Will Do. You took up your seat to allow others to see there is no future in inequality. Why should one race stand in front of another leading without democracy? Color must never determine fate as ultimately we all belong to one great big race. A seat does actually matter as it provides a place connecting us all to our earthly base. Thank you for that. Uh, and have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, this is Job with John, June 5th, and we're signing off. Take care.